Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear. There we go. The gameplay scene just popped in, and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again on my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Nuzlocke run. Uh, remember, as always, that you can catch the show you're currently watching live uh, every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST, and you can catch up on all my prior broadcasts on YouTube, where they publish every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, Unfortunately, last time around, I made it very clear and apparent that there were going to be kinks that I was going to need to work out in the stream that I had uh, just switched over to uh, OBS version 28.0.1. Uh, and last time around, things didn't go so badly. There wasn't a whole lot of issues to report. Uh, but this time around, they really kicked me in the balls by resulting in my stream not working quite so right away. Of course, if you're watching this episode on YouTube after the fact, you won't catch any of the technical difficulties I had to deal with ahead of time. So that's nice. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get this uh, glitchy ickiness behind us and let's jump uh, right into uh, the game. So last time around, of course, uh, we properly formed up uh, the six members that are going to be making up our team from here on out. Uh, we, of course, have Marshmallow the Gengar. We have Cookie the Snorlax. We have Mochi the Slowbro. We have Tortellini um, the uh, Victory Bell. Sorry, I was trying to remember which of the three it was. Uh, and we have Lychee uh, the Magneton. And not pictured because Tenduri is currently taking up his spot. Uh, we have, of course, Blueberry uh, the Blastoise. Uh, and we've decided, you know what? It would be a little bit much if we immediately went and took on Sabrina's gym. So what if instead uh, we traveled uh, via sea to Cinnabar Island uh, and went and explored the Pokemon Mansion a bit? And now that we're here, I figure we might as well strut on in. Still don't plan on using uh, Macaron uh, or Macaroon the Lapras, unfortunately. I think I'm going to be pretty good. I actually think that legally I can't use it. It's it's tough because I got Hitmon Lee uh, from the Fighting Dojo and I got Lapras from the Sylph Co building. And if anybody out there uh, wants to weigh in on whether it's legal for me to use the two of them by all means do so because i don't know if like do the fighting dojo and um the sylph corporation building count as two separate places or do they count as the same place because they were both within saffron city i am gonna go ahead on a limb and say that but they both count as the same location and i'm only allowed to use one of them uh nevertheless i will keep around lapras on my pc box for the next little bit i just won't really use it um the Pokemon Mansion. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's one of the few last places yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, where we can still capture a Pokemon we have not yet obtained. Not only is it a Vulpix, which is a Pokemon I was maybe thinking of getting, but also um, it's a Vulpix. Uh, it's a Pokemon that can evolve with an evolutionary stone, which we have not caught in a while. I know that last time around, I officially added Marshmallow to my team and made him an official member, but I am half tempted half tempted to maybe replace uh, this guy with Vulpix, actually, because as much as I appreciate the service that Marshmallow has provided until now, I don't know just how useful his psychic abilities are going to be. And you know what? A lot of in order for him to become truly useful, we're going to have to eventually teach him a lot of TM moves that honestly, like truth be told, just you know, won't uh, we won't be able to get a whole lot of. So maybe this is who we replace Marshmallow with. Uh, of course, uh, as you might expect, uh, Vulpix and Ninetales, not typically Pokemon that I use uh, in my Pokemon runs, and both Pokemon that I like quite a bit. So I think this might be uh, indeed the next member that we will be adding to our team. I, it's funny, I thought coming off of last stream that we were going to be... Uh, fitting in Marshmallow as the kind of final member of the gang, but I think I might be changing my mind. 
I'd completely forgotten we could get this guy. Uh, when it is born, it has just one snow white tail. Uh, the tail splits from its tip as it grows older. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to call Vulpix. Got to give this guy a nice foodie name. Uh, let's call this guy... Oh, I was thinking of something like chocolate, but I feel like... I don't know if that's like a totally befitting name of it when it evolves into a, a Ninetales. I could call it Milkshake, but I feel like that's also not a very... Uh, that's not like a very fiery kind of name. What's that? I'm trying to think. I could call it custard, although I don't. Or I could call it pudding, but I feel like that's more of like a Jigglypuff name. Hmm. What do I want to call this guy? Uh, you know what? What if I call it? What if I call her Brioche? There we go. I think I have gotten it. And without further ado, let's go ahead. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Straight up, I'm just going to go. I'm going to immediately fly to Celadon City, and I'm going to get myself uh, a new Firestone so I can immediately evolve it, uh, because I don't want to deal with some of the predicaments I've encountered in the past where I'm not able to evolve a vulnerable member of my team fast enough, and that member ends up dying prematurely. Cough, cough. Uh, what's his face? Uh, trap inch. There we go. Cough, cough, trap inch. Cough, cough. I was trying to remember who was it that died in a really unceremonious fashion. Uh, also, I should probably... Whoops. There we go. All right, this is pretty exciting. I I had completely forgotten. See, in my mind, I remembered um, Cinnabar Mansion as being filled with a ton of poison type Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon like. Um, also, this guy does not know how to use Fly. I was. I think I selected the wrong Fero. Uh, yeah, in my mind, I remember Cinnabar Mansion being filled with a ton of Poison-type Pokémon, like uh, Coughing and Weezing and Grimer and Muck. I'd completely forgotten that it also has a few Fire Pokémon as well, which makes sense, um, considering that it is all kind of burnt out. Like, it's implied that some sort of crazy fire ravaged it at some point. If I recall correctly, in Pokémon Fire Red, the kind of primary Fire-type Pokémon that you could encounter inside of it was Growlithe, and uh, I'm guessing in this version... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that in this version, um, Vulpix and Ninetales replaced Growlithe and Arcanine. Uh, here we go. I actually don't remember... Do I have the funds right now to make a lot of purchases? I actually think I might because I fought a couple of those trainers on the sea route uh, to get to Cinnabar Island. So I think I might be okay. Let's find out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely okay. Even if I wasn't... Oh. Hold on a second, hold on a second. It seems like my stream is a little bit on the fritz. Okay, we're back, we're back. Everything's good, everything's okay. Last time, my stream was a little bit on the fritz and my uh, connection went offline. Uh, my kind of uh, stream highlight after the fact had no real obvious issues. So I'm assuming that everything will be A-OK, -okay, but obviously I'll have to review the stream afterwards to make sure. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Once again, unfortunately, we don't have access to the experience share, which means that we're going to have to actually send Vulpix out in the field and we can't just um, send him, uh, sorry, send her to the back of my party once we start using her in battle to level her up. Um, but 
Well, there really is no but. It is kind of just a downside. Uh, but... Uh, I, I suppose what I was trying to say is, but, you know, it, it has to be done if we are to, you know, level up good old Vulpix into being a fiery murdering machine. Man, I am so happy. I really, really, really wanted to have, like, a signature grass, a signature water, and a signature fire Pokemon on my team to kind of complete the holy trinity of Pokemon types. And I'm happy that I'm finally going to be able to do so. And once again, it's with a Pokemon that, you know, typically I don't tend to really use a whole lot in my Pokemon adventures. Of course, uh, both Volcapix and Ninetales, not difficult Pokemon to get within uh, the Ruby Sapphire Emerald games. Uh, you can get them as early as like the area around Laveridge Town, I want to say. Um, but even with that considered, not really Pokemon I ever felt particularly inclined to use. And because growing up, I had Pokemon Fire Red, I never really kind of got easy access to uh, Vulpix and Ninetales in those games because those Pokemon, um, you know, they tended to <laughs> not really be available in those games because you could only get access to Growlithe and Arcanine. Now looking at Ninetales stats, it's not exactly a home run. There's no real kind of standout stat. They're all actually kind of about the same thing, uh, but they're still very solid. Uh, now look at these moves, however. Uh, we have some interesting options to work with. We have uh, Will-O-Wisp. It's one of the few Pokemon in the game that can learn uh, Will-O-Wisp, which will immediately burn the target if it hits. Uh, Confuse Ray, the superior uh, confusion-inducing move. Uh, Imprison is a little bit useless. We'll probably get rid of that at some point. Uh, but Flamethrower, here we go. Now this is what you call an impressive Fire-type move. Let me just go into... Uh, my bag real quick and just see if I have anything on hand that I could theoretically replace a flamethrower with anything that would be a kind of more worthwhile move to give it. I have a feeling that a lot of these moves are probably things I can't teach it. Just I'm just curious. I know like it can't necessarily use area lace or rock tomb efficiently, but they are coverage moves if it could learn them. Uh, yeah, can't learn a lot of these. Can Oh, it can learn Dig. I was about to say, I don't think that there's a high possibility that it can learn Dig, but it can learn Dig. Now, this is going to be a bit of a... It's a bit of a situational move. It's also a move we're going to need to be careful with because we don't want it to run into a scenario where we're facing off against a Pokemon that can learn Earthquake, go underground with Dig, and then get hit by... Earthquake while we're underground digging, because that can really screw us up. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it seems like that's kind of it for now. Eventually, when we get Solar Beam, we can actually uh, teach it Solar Beam, so that will be worthwhile. We could do like a. We could give it a Sunny Day moveset where it has Sunny Day, Flamethrower, Solar Beam, and one other move to help kind of balance things out. Um, hmm. just trying to think, is there anybody that I want to put like at the front of the party to kind of like focus a little bit more on leveling up Mochi? Eventually, we do want to teach Mochi uh, Psychic, which it will learn in a few levels, but we do want to level up Brioche. Uh, one thing I will say, I do appreciate that Brioche has Flash Fire, uh, which means that it will be very useful in the upcoming battle against Blaine, uh, because it means that all of Blaine's Fire-type moves will be uh, unable to affect good old Brioche. <sighs> I'll keep... I'll keep Brioche at the front of the party for the next little bit, and then eventually at some point... I'll swap her out for someone else or just straight up ignore the Pokemon battles in this mansion entirely. We'll see. And Flamethrower, what a good move to have. We really lucked out. It's not actually that bad of an experience yield, but, you know, you do kind of wish it was a little bit better. 
Ooh, I feel a little bit bad fighting my previously evolved form, but you know, all's fair in war. Excuse me. Now, I am aware of the fact that Ninetales in this gen is not as strong as it will, you know, eventually go on to be in subsequent generations. You know what? I'm just going to run from this battle. No need to. Um, subsequent generations will introduce things like, for example, it will give it the ability Drought, which is like a very useful Pokemon, a uh, very useful, sorry, ability uh, on a fire type Pokemon like Ninetales, even more useful than Flash Fire, which already is like a pretty useful ability. Um, and of course, they'll give it, you know, many more interesting coverage moves that give it, you know, even more options in battle. Uh, and of course, Gen 7 uh, introduces Alolan Ninetales, which is the uh, fairy uh, ice type version of Ninetales that's a little bit on the frail side, kind of taken down a little bit easily by its weaknesses, but otherwise, like, actually quite powerful and quite useful, especially in double battle situations, because it can use that one ice type move. I forget its name, but it's the ice type move that will basically set up the equivalent of like both reflect and light screen all at once. You know what? Because I've been screeched, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to swap out to someone else for this one. Just want to be careful. I don't want to lose her right off the bat. Oh, come on. It's a good thing that I can just immediately one hit KO this guy with confusion. Goodbye. Ooh, Radicate. Here we go. This is a little bit more of a challenge, which is, you know, something that you always love to see. And let's go ahead and let's turn up the heat. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought Radicate would hit faster. Ninetales has actually a pretty good speed stat. It has a base speed stat of 100 shit. Uh-oh, we might actually be in trouble here because Radicate has access to both Pursuit and Quick Attack. Um, I'm going to go ahead, however, per the rules and sprint the prize wheel of criticality. We can't necessarily get screwed over here that badly. I mean, theoretically, uh-oh, uh-oh, it seems like there is some issue that's preventing my prize camera from coming in, uh-oh. Okay, it seems like, it seems like what's going on right here and right now is it seems like my version of OBS keeps getting disconnected from uh, OBS tools by Bar Raider, uh, which is the uh, app, uh, the plugin set up on my stream deck, which is what allows me to do these kind of cool little kind of movement graphics. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do this manually. Uh, give me just a quick second. Da -da -da. Uh prize camera, filters, and fade in. There we go. Uh, definitely something to look into for next stream, though. One, two, and three. Drop five. Uh, that means uh, that once we exit uh, this here battle, we are going to need to drop five items uh, that are currently sitting in our inventory. Uh, in the meantime, however, uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be extra precautious here. I don't want to get hit by a quick attack if I stay in battle or a pursuit if I try to switch out of battle. So I'm going to fully heal myself with a hyper potion. And oh, it, it didn't use uh, pursuit or um, quick attack, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use actually another considering it's not unlikely to kind of fuck all right you know what screw it i'm just gonna switch out i really wanted to take on that radicate but that radicate was just causing me a little bit too much grief so this is what's gonna have to happen It's 
not even that much experience points. Okay, before we forget, let's go ahead and let's uh, go ahead and drop some items. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss uh, two full heals. Uh, I'm going to get spicy here and I'm going to toss this Thunderstone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss this Elixir. And we need to toss something else. Let's go ahead and let's toss this X Special as well. And there we go. Five items have been dropped. I don't know what exactly is going on. I, um, like I said at the top of the stream, I recently switched over to OBS version uh, 28.0.1. Uh, and that, you know, caused a little bit of uh, a few issues when I was initially setting it up ahead of Monday's stream. Uh, but uh, on the actual stream itself, no real issues to kind of speak of. I was able to kind of get through the entire thing with no real issue. Uh, but now it seems like a new problem has developed, which is that over time it becomes disconnected uh, from the OBS Tools by Bar Raider plugin on my stream deck, which is not great because a lot of the fancy actions on my stream uh, are dependent. Oh, here we go, a secret switch. A lot of the fancy effects on my stream are dependent on me uh, having my stream deck connected to OBS uh, via that means. I feel bad that Grimer is so slow that it's not even faster than Snorlax at this point. Uh, I just want to, I will explore kind of the rest of the ground floor of the mansion. And then after that, I will go to a Pokemon Center and heal up my team a little bit. I mean, I could actually just go ahead and use a potion if I wanted to, in fact. That actually might be, then I think about it, I think that might actually be the more worthwhile option. I bought a lot of potions earlier, uh, including super potions, which are a little bit more of an effective means of healing out some of the weaker members of my party at the moment. So I'm going to, I use that. I'm going to swap Ryoshi back to the front. I completely forgot about Radita and Radicate uh, infesting a lot of this mansion, but I suppose it makes sense. Like, uh, an old decrepit building like the Cinnabar Mansion probably would be filled with Pokemon like them. That being said, I will say I am very grateful that the first Pokemon I encountered in here was a Vulpix. Because if I had encountered a Radita or a Radicate, that would have been it would have been like when I encountered 50 Firos in a row back when I was heading to Fuchsia City. Like that, it would have been so fucking demoralizing. Okay, so this guy did have... Uh, he, wow, he has both Quick Attack and Pursuit. But apparently the, the trainer that we encountered earlier that had Raticate did not. Ah, god damn it. I mean, it doesn't matter because it, it didn't, you know, get a lucky kill crit on me, but... I swear these things are the bane of my existence. Uh, let's go ahead and let's spin the prize wheel of criticality yet again. Uh, one, two, and three. Go broke. Uh, this means that we are going to have to rush ourselves to a Pokemon Center and immediately spend all of the money that we currently have on our person. Uh, it's actually not that bad in this particular case because uh, thankfully, thankfully, uh, we didn't have a lot of money to begin with. At the end of last stream, we actually spent a lot of our money on items, but it's still a little bit sad. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use a max repel so I can skedaddle out of here without too many issues. I am curious though, is there anything down here that I should know about? Oh, uh, interesting. I guess that's probably one of those. It's been a while since I played through Pokemon Mansion. I'm assuming that's something I will have to... Um, that's a barrier that I'll be able to remove with one of the Mewtwo statues that is waiting upstairs. Hmm. Huh. 
Oh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think, like, what's a item I can buy a lot of that will get me as much in the bag as possible? It's a little bit tough. There's actually not, like, an obvious thingy. Oh, revives. What about this? 575. Oh, and then I can buy... So I'll buy five revives, and then I'll buy a Great Ball. And that will basically get me as close to having zero Poke Dollars as possible. Oh, look at that! 64 Poke Dollars. That's pretty funny. Oh, wait. Uh, I made a mistake. I meant to drop that. I did not mean to sell it. Well, in that case, I will go ahead and I will sell the two of them back to her and buy one so it works out back to exactly what we had before and now uh, that that little bit of math is resolved I'm gonna go back in here and I am going to toss the five revives that I have there we go that's what I meant to do <clears throat> excuse me So, if you look at my uh, webcam setup, you might have probably noticed something new and exciting. Uh, I went ahead and installed another um, series of LED strips that extend along the uh, contour of the wall right behind me. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I appreciate the extra uh, bit of color uh, that they now contribute to the uh, appearance of my basement, uh, even without any other lights. That being said, I don't love the fact that right behind me right now, the kind of um, strip of lights that I just installed is as visible as it is. I think I'm going to be rethinking exactly where my current Sony web camera, not web camera, straight up camera uh, is situated because I don't really want the green streak behind me to be super visible. And I don't know exactly yet what the solution is. I'm wondering if... Maybe what I just need to do is I need to kind of like shift over the camera so it sort of shows me a little bit more in back of uh, my kind of like Pokemon uh, and like Amiibo paraphernalia. Uh, just kind of like give you kind of a better view of the action if we bait this in here. See, I'm thinking like maybe I can have my head more in back of this stuff over here. Or maybe what I need to do is I need to kind of just lower the whole thing so you can't see the little bar on top of me, or maybe just, I don't know, move it over to the side. There are definitely a few different options, but I just don't love, I don't love how visible the lights are above me right now. One thing that I can always do uh, is, of course, I can uh, straight up turn off those lights, uh, although the kind of green, the intensity of the green effect behind me will not be as intense anymore. So something to think out. Let's get back to the game. This will actually be an opportunity for us to use Dig uh, for the first time in a really meaningful way. You know, we're probably going to get hit by a move at this point, though. A Charmeleon... Uh, unfortunately has access to Slash, which can cause us a little bit of hurt uh, if it hits us, especially if it crits us, but the, the jury's out on whether or not we'll actually see it used. So far it's used Scary Face, Smoke Screen, oh, and I guess we won't find out what the other two moves are. It is a little unfortunate that, like, there are a lot of trainers in this game, way more trainers than I remember, that use the uh, starter Pokemon and their second tier evolutions. We've seen trainers use Squirtle, uh, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Charmeleon, uh, War Turtle, and Ivysaur, but unfortunately, we're only going to end up seeing the Pokemon Champion use 
the kind of fully formed version of the startup that they took, which I think is a little bit of a waste. I would have liked to have seen other trainers use the uh, fully formed versions of the starters at some point. Ah. Here we go, another Raticate. Now that I'm a level higher, maybe I'll, I'll be able to take this guy on a little bit quicker. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Sorry, I had a bit of a brain fart for a second there. There we go. All right, now it's definitely a two-hit KO, which is much preferable. For, for a second, I was like, is that going to be another crit? Thankfully, it was not. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're going to be able to get this item without issue after we battle this guy. It's another Raticate. I mean, I, I might as well take him down. This guy is a little bit weaker than the last guy. So that's good. Oh, but he's also more defensively oriented. Maybe maybe I'll use Scary Face this time around. We'll see. Okay, we should still be okay. I think. There's still the possibility maybe he'll pull like a, a Hyper Fang on me. Oh, he has a berry. Yeah. Surprising. There's still the possibility he might pull like a Hyper Fang on me and crit, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we're okay, but unfortunately at this point in the game, Brioche is still a lot more frail than we'd prefer it to be, so... It's unfortunately a little bit slow going. You know what? You know what? Let's go ahead. I know that Zinc isn't really what Brioche needs to be able to take on Raticates, which primarily use um, physically oriented moves, but... I figured I'd give it that just to kind of show that I appreciate its efforts thus far. And let's go ahead and let's heal it up a little bit, too. All right. Oh, here we go. We get the first of the uh, mysterious journal entries that chronicle the creation of Mewtwo. So that's exciting. You know what? I probably should not be fighting as many wild Pokemon. If I really need to level up Brioche, it would be better for me to do so with... Pokemon trainers, so maybe maybe I'll swap out someone else to the front of the party and just run from them. Or, uh, you know what, I, I suspect Brioche is probably fast enough. Uh, July 10th, uh, we christened the newly discovered Pokemon Mew. It's always been kind of an interesting dichotomy how... Mew is like simultaneously the new species Pokemon, but it's also said to like contain the genetic kind of DNA uh, of all Pokemon that follow. Like it's simultaneously the newest and oldest Pokemon all at once. Oh, wow, this is a strong Raticate. You know what? I'm actually going to swap out and have someone else take care of this one. Wow, that didn't even take it out. Wow. This guy is one bulky rat. Ah, oh, shit. Shit burger and a half. We have ourselves a prize wheel of criticality that we are going to have to spin. Let's go ahead and let's spin that wheel. One, two, and three. Do yoga. It's been a little while since we've had to do this. Uh, of course, you might recall how on previous streams I used to do push-ups when I would land on uh, one of these two spaces. However, um, because of my right arm and shoulder not feeling super good and still not feeling super good, uh, I decided to kind of put the kibosh on that and do a little bit of yoga instead. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in our camera for this exact occasion. So 
and you can see right here, uh, my Pancake Love shirt, very fond of it. I got it at uh, Montreal's Otakuthon Anime Convention. Here, let me show you a better view of the shirt in question. Uh, let's see, what am I gonna do? I know, and we'll, we'll do an old standby, an old favorite. We're gonna get down uh, on our back, like such. We're going to uh, fold our knees like this so that they're kind of triangular shaped. We're gonna hold out our leg like that, uh, alternating left and right uh, for five reps of 10 seconds each. All the while, we clench our stomach muscles like this so we get a nice little ab workout. And there we go, that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now give me just a second. I'm just going to be getting up slowly because my right shoulder and arm are still a little bit sore and I don't want to put a lot of pressure on them. There we go. I'm a little bit, gotta be honest, a little bit dizzy. A little bit of blood rushing to my head that I'm not totally in love with, but that's what happens when you put your back into it. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a good thing that I'm very familiar with the kind of ins and outs of the way that my setup works and I can do a lot of this stuff without needing to uh, rely on my stream deck for the time being. Although I don't appreciate that. You know, I've been running from these things, but I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to try fighting this one. See how far I can get. Maybe it'll just use, like, scary face over and over and I'll be okay. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm happy that I took it out in one hit, but unfortunately, we are going to have to go ahead and we are going to have to do ourselves yet another spin of the prize wheel of criticality. One. Two. And three. Hot sauce shot, uh, always a stream classic. This is where we have to do a shot of hot sauce in order to prove our metal. Uh, give me a just a second, real quick. All right. Of course, if this is your first time tuning into today's stream, uh, this is uh, Melinda's uh, Chipotle Pepper Sauce. Uh, this has joined us in many an excursion in the past into the realm of spicy hot sauce shots, uh, and it will join us once again today. Eventually, at some point, we will have to retire it. We will have to replace it with something else, but not right now. There we go. That came out really fast. Really fast, normally. Ugh. 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 Normally you have to tap the bottom of it a lot to get it out, but not this time. Ugh. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Yeah. 
Here we go, July 5th, uh, Guyana, South America. A new Pokemon was discovered deep in the jungle, that Pokemon being Mew. Now, of course, I remember reading this journal entry from back in the day and remarking about them using, uh, sorry, referencing uh, Guyana. Um, however, to be honest, I actually don't know where Guyana is. I know that it's within South America. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I'm looking right now at a map of South America. Uh, Guyana is actually located to the east of Venezuela and Colombia. Uh, it shares the border of uh, Brazil, Venezuela, and Suriname. Uh, or Suriname. I, I apologize if I'm getting these names correctly. By all means, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat uh, their actual pronunciations. Um, Let's see here. Uh, quick facts. Guyana, uh, a country on South America's North Atlantic coast, is defined by its dense rainforest. English speaking, with cricket and calypso music, it's culturally connected to the Caribbean region. Uh, its capital, Georgetown, is known for its British colonial architecture, including tall painted uh, timber St. George's Anglican uh, Cathedral. A large clock marks the facade of uh, Sarbroic Market, a source of of local produce. Well, that's cool. All right, let's go ahead and let's get back in the game. Ooh, calcium. You know what? I feel like our friend Ninetales could actually benefit from this thing. So let's go ahead and let's give it some calcium. Ooh. Oh, and you know what? While we're at it, let's give it a super potion as well. Five minute rule, so I'm going ahead and I'm drinking a little bit of water. Normally I would not bother with lesser Pokemon like Grimer, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually dig it a little bit. Get some easy experience points. I'm almost at level 32, so you know, the faster I can get there, the more quickly I will be able to hit harder and take harder hits. Wow, there we go. I was actually not expecting that it would level up after that, but lo and behold, I'm a little bit... I'm surprised it gained three attack points there. I'm assuming that's because we're fighting Raticates, but also it's a naughty nature. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I keep forgetting what natures mean what within the Pokemon universe. Naughty nature. That is, it increases its attack, but what does it decrease? It's not... It's not special attack, uh, because that's a Danant. Ooh, HC. Interesting. Uh, increased attack and decreased special defense. That's not exactly great on Ninetales, considering that Ninetales', Nine, Ninetales special defense is actually one of its few really good stats. Uh, that being said... <laughs> that being said... Um, Ninetales is... Um, hold on a sec, let me just use another... Um, super potion. Uh, we actually do appreciate Ninetales having a little bit more attack than it would otherwise have, however, because it seems like in terms of attack options, um, outside of Flamethrower, it's a lot of like physically oriented moves, so I suppose it's not that bad. Right now, I'm looking up at um, Ninetales' uh, level up moves in Generation 3. Unfortunately, Ninetales is one of those Pokemon that after it evolves, it doesn't really learn anything of consequence, um, except inexplicably for Fire Spin, which it learns at level 45. I don't think we're going to be using that one. Um, in terms of TMs, however, I mean, it's a little bit better. It does learn Overheat, which is actually a very useful, um, like, super hyper powerful fire type nuke move um what else of course it learns sunny day oh this is interesting it learns iron tail um oh that's a powerful nine tails i'm gonna swap out to someone else 
Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I might actually honestly consider teaching at Iron Tail, uh, just to have coverage, uh, if I'm able to learn it before the Elite Four. Uh, what else? Are you fucking kidding me? Why did fuck did that need to critical hit? Uh, of course, I'm gonna keep Dig, because I think that's just like a good coverage move to have. Um, and I'm a little bit surprised. I thought I was under the impression that it learned Solar Beam, but I guess I'm guessing it only learned Solar Beam in like a different generation, because I definitely remember it being able to learn Solar Beam in this gen, but I guess I was mistaken. Yeah, not a whole lot of great options outside of that, but obviously uh, Will-O-Wisp and Confuse Ray are pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in the uh, prize wheel of criticality and let's spin the wheel. One, two, and three. Switch it up. Uh, that means that in the next battle that we are going to end up in, we're going to have to uh, switch up the Pokemon at the front of our party three times. Also, some, some interesting retconning going on here. The, the journal describing Mew as having given live birth to Mewtwo. Kind of weird, especially considering, like, the weird part is not even that Mewtwo gave... Uh, sorry, is not even that Mew gave birth to Mewtwo, which is a bit of a deviation from typically how Pokemon lore goes into how uh, Mewtwo was created. Uh, it's also the fact um, that typically in the Pokemon universe... Uh, Pokemon uh, are only birthed from eggs. We don't really get to see the live birth happen a whole lot. All right, here we go. That was uh, switch number one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch out to this guy next. Switch number two. Now, who do we want to switch out for number three? I'm going to switch back out to Mochi. Get it to level 41. Oh, no. It's not that bad, though. <laughs> and yeah, Surf is still its ba best move, so... Eventually, we, we will learn Psychic, though. And that will make things much easier on us. And there we go. That's how the cookie crumbles. Everybody gets plenty of experience points. You get experience points. You get experience points. We're all so happy with all of our experience points that we're basing inside of. Oh, look at that. Luck. Hmm. I'm just curious. I don't know if I'll actually go through it beating it, but I do want to see how much damage I can do with Dig. It's not that much damage. Also, it's using Minimize now. Yeah, no, no, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run. If I had Slow Bro at the front of my party and he knew how to use Psychic, I would take him out immediately. But that's not the case at the moment. Okay. And there we go, more iron. You have too much iron in your blood. I love. What a fantastic scene in X2, X-Men United, and what a fantastic performance from Sir Ian McKellen. You know what? I feel like I'm kind of done fighting them wild Pokemon in here. Maybe I should go ahead and I should actually just use a Max Repel. Here we go. Uh, yeah, here we go. Ooh, your mentor once lived here. I wonder who your mentor is. Does he by any chance rhyme with Kuji? Or Luigi, or Ruji. By the way, this is a bit of an unfortunate matchup. Not only are we fire type, 
uh, and have access to flamethrower, but we also know dig. It would be even worse if they were fighting like a, if we were squaring off, if he was squaring off against like a camera up, for example. Speaking of which, man, it still sucks that that Numel had to die in my Pokemon Leaf Green run. I really wanted him to shit. Okay, there we go. I I wasn't a hundred thousand percent certain whether or not that would do a lot of damage to me. I was like, look, we are at full hit points right now. We're not like utterly in danger of being immediately decimated, but it's still a lot of damage. Now, hmm. Sending in Magneton, do I want to stay out for this? It can probably one-hit KO me if it hits me with an Electric-type move. Shit, no, that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do is I wanted to actually... Uh, I wanted to check uh, Lychee's speed stat to see how fast it is at the moment to see if uh, Brioche could attack first. Uh, it would seem as if... Uh, it is actually quite a bit slower, and I probably could have one-hit KO'd it. However, now that I'm facing off against it, I can't switch out because it has Magnet Pull, which means that, unfortunately, I got a Sonic Boom this. It is so funny that there have been, like, multiple battles in a row that have come down th to these stupid tactics. Come on. Goodbye, Magneton. Okay. Ooh, I forgot. Uh, Pokemon that are still of my same level can encounter me. You know what? Brioche is on the verge of leveling up. Let's go ahead. Let's swap in Blueberry to take down Muck. Uh, once it levels up to level 33, actually, the only Pokemon we'll need to worry about are potentially level 36 Raticate, so we should be okay. <clears throat> I don't love this. Come on. Ah, uh, come on. Come on! Well, thank God I still have access to Water Pulse. Fuck! I think we're gonna have to split up the damage again. Come on. Un- uh, uh, You be able- Please, please, please gain access to Surf again. Nah, damn it. There we go. Come on, come on. Ah! Alright, he can still hurt himself in confusion. We can still end this right here, right now. Come on, come on. Ah! Come on, Muck. Come on, make this easier for the two of us. Come on, buddy. Come on, Muck. Come on, my friend. Yes! Thank you, Muck. There we go. Level 33. Hey, lots of nice little stat boosting items that we're getting around here. All right. Uh, I remember one of these two things is the correct one. I'm going to say this it's this one. Or was it? I don't know. Right. If I remember correctly, what we need to do is we got to... We got to use that thing while one of the 
barriers is or isn't up. I think that's what we gotta do. It's been a while. Ah, oh, man. It, uh, if we're gonna encounter level 36 radicates at this level of consistency, maybe I should just put someone else at the front of the party. Hold on. There we go. Somebody who is exactly level 37, just to slow you down. Okay. Where do we gotta go next? Hold on, let me just... I'm gonna return to the... I'm gonna return to the ground level to see if there's anything we can get around here. Wait, did I not already press it? Okay, so this is where we got to get down to. This is the next step, as it were, but I'm trying to remember, is the, the solution to the area that we're currently in that we got to drop down further again? And if so... Just trying to think. Think this through. Maybe we have to actually leave this pressed on. Excuse me. Well, that's definitely one change that I appreciate about the newer Pokemon games is that they just let you immediately apply another repel the moment that you need to do so. All right. Where is the Mewtwo statue? There we go. Uh, oh, did we... Did we not already try going down here? I don't remember. Gonna run out of repels at this rate, honestly. Maybe if I go on the one on the left, I'll end up on like a lower floor. There we go. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and I will swap Ryoshi to the front of the party for this one, and I will also heal up its hit points just a little bit. This seems like a Pokemon that has a very high propensity to randomly explode, so I'm actually going to swap Brioche out and swap in Cookie for this one. Uh, I don't love that. Let's... Uh, he doesn't have Dig. That's too bad. Well, I didn't get to see what he was trying to do, so I suppose it all works out. Weezing. Uh, I'll, I'll do the whole swap in, swap out strategy again. Actually, I forgot. Uh, Cookie will actually prove pretty useful 
in the Blaine Gym as well, because he has Thick Fat as his ability, which of course means that he has uh, increased resistance to fire and ice type moves. Uh, he'll, of course, he'll also be pretty useful in the Sabrina Psychic Gym because he has great special defense, but I'd forgotten he'll be really useful for this one too. There we go. <clears throat> Goodbye, Weezing. Uh, hold on a second. I think we have to explore the basement first. Oh. I completely forgot about the basement, by the way. I don't know where that other uh, path leads that we saw a little bit earlier, but if that's an extra exit that immediately takes us back outside, I mean, that's not exactly great in our case, because we don't want to go outside right now. Goodbye, Growlithe. Uh, I'll just w w keep in for Ponyta. No need to swap out again. Ah, come on. Ah, come on! You got a crit on that? Let's go ahead and let's spin the prize wheel of criticality. One, two, and three. Well, boys and girls, looks like we are doing another shot of hot sauce. Uh, let me go ahead and let's bring in our hot sauce bottle. Uh, and let's bring in our uh, main camera view as well. There we go. Hmm. Gotta love it when you get a little bit of it on your lips. Oh. Oh man. This is worse as ever. Oh. Whew. Mewtwo is far too powerful. We have failed to curb. It's vicious tendencies. Uh oh. <sighs> oh, I forgot. We have um too weak of a Pokemon at the front of our party now. It is interesting how the basement of the gym, which you think would be the most decrepit part of this failing old mansion, is actually the part that is, like, the most intact. Like, it is, like, oddly spacious and clean and not very cluttered, which is weird. Wow, a level 38 Raticate. That is a high level rat. Come on. There we go. Uh, let's swap in Brioche.
Uh, this will be another instance in which I stay in for Electrode and then I immediately swap out to do to, 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 let's swap out to Cookie. Let's see him again. Ooh, roll out. One of the the few other moves that uh, Electrode can learn that is not that are not uh, electric or normal type moves. Even if it got to a maximum rollout, though, I mean, it probably was not going to hurt us all that much. Hey, my name is not Steve. How's it going? I, I will say, it's not the hottest hot sauce that I've ever tasted, but I keep getting just relentlessly exposed to it over and over and over and over and over again. And it's... It, it definitely has me by the balls by this point. Uh, I should probably swap out with somebody faster at the front of the party, maybe. <sighs> I'm still feeling the effects of it. Ooh, Blizzard! Who... Is there anybody in their party that can learn Blizzard at the moment? I would prefer to teach somebody uh, Ice Beam over Blizzard if I had the option of it, but I'm just curious. Okay, interesting. So it's not surprisingly... Uh, Blueberry and Mochi can both learn Blizzard. However, uh, Cookie the Snorlax can learn Blizzard as well. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, but still, yeah, nice to see you around again, Steve. Um... Oh, shit. Ditto. I completely forgot that this guy showed up around here. Who do I want to switch him up with? I'm trying to think. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I can use Dig on Ditto after it tries to transform in me. It, sorry, tries to transform into me and I can take it by surprise. Oh, it failed. I didn't even realize that was going to happen. I thought that it would just straight up transform into me despite me not being there. But I guess, you know, I guess transform doesn't work if I'm flying in the air or digging. Goodbye, ditto. I think this is actually the first time that we've even encountered ditto on this run. We um, we previously passed through that one route, uh, just, I want to say, east of Fuchsia City, where we could have encountered them in the grass, but we did not. Uh, we are almost about to level up, so let's get a good old kill on Grimer and we'll do that. Uh, my name uh, is not Steve13 says, what are your thoughts on the new games coming out? Are, are you referring to like just the rest of the new games that are coming out this year? Or are you referring to the games that were uh, announced in like the Nintendo and Sony Directs that aired recently? Like, in terms of the, the games that are coming out this year, like, I'm pretty... Um, I'm pretty excited for Bayonetta 3. I'm interested in seeing how they kind of conclude that little arc of the Bayonetta story. It seems like they have a bit of a multiverse story going on there, which is interesting, and not really something that a lot of people are talking about. Oh, uh, my name is not Steve13 says, fair point, I meant the new Pokemon, so you mean to say uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. So, I'm pretty excited about them. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, Solar Beam, here we go. Let me actually, I, let me just check real quick. I want to see who on my team can learn Solar Beam if Ninetales can't learn to it. Tortellini can learn Solar Beam, and it could actually use Solar Beam pretty effectively. However, it already already has access to Giga Drain, so it will be kind of wasted on it. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to use another... I'm going to use a Super Repel this time, because we've not used a whole lot of those. Okay, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, I'm looking forward to them. Um, ultimately, I think it remains to be seen 
whether a lot of the kind of experiments that they seem to be doing with those games will work out. Uh, it seems like they are like really like genuinely trying to shake up the Pokemon formula uh, with these games, much more so than uh, what they did with like Pokemon Sun and Moon, for example, which like also previously really attempted to kind of shake up the Pokemon formula. And so we will see how things pay off. Uh, I do appreciate the kind of like open ended nature um, of the game that they seem to be teasing, how you'll be able to kind of go and take on any of the kind of gym leaders in any order. Um, I also appreciate um, the fact that it seems like there's going to be a pretty kind of substantial story mode for you to kind of find an experience this time around, if that's, you know, something of interest to you. I feel like a lot of times the Pokemon games have really kind of whiffed in terms of their story content and it seems like this game is going to potentially be a big kind of step up in that regard. If some of the leaks are to be believed, there's like some pretty crazy cool stuff that might happen in the story mode involving uh, potentially even time travel uh, from what I've heard, which is exciting. Um, uh oh, how do I get out of here? Am I stuck? Oh, no, wait a minute. I need to I need to go downstairs and I need to activate one of these switches. Um, the, the one part that I'm not super keen about is apparently like one of the kind of main three pillars of the game will be uh, these sort of segments in which you'll take on the new evil team of the game, which will be Team Star in the sort of the, the way that they've described it or the way that I've understood them is that they're almost like these sort of horde mode scenarios where you're just taking on dozens and dozens and dozens of trainers all at once. Um... I don't know about those segments. Now, there were, there were a lot of people that were up in arms about the fact that it seems like the new Pokemon games are going to just allow your Pokemon to kind of auto battle and level up without you needing to do anything. It When I read that, I initially was a little bit apprehensive at first because it just struck me as being a very kind of mobile game, kind of gotcha game kind of thing of like, you don't have to do any effort yourself. You can just kind of, you know, leave the game be and it will kind of work for you. But Unlike a lot of gacha games where like the core kind of gameplay loop in them is not very good, I expect that the core gameplay loop in Crimson uh, and Violet will be very satisfying and that uh, this will just be one of those things where like it'll exist for the people that want to use it and those people that don't want to use it don't have to use it and they'll, you know, get a lot of enjoyment out of defeating battles manually. Now, you know what? We have two different gyms that are now available to us. We have the Cinnabar Gym with Blaine, and we have the Saffron Gym with Sabrina. I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to fly to the Saffron Gym. And I'm going to actually take it on first just to see kind of where things are at. Don't worry, Tortellini. You will uh, end up uh, back in the party. I mean, I don't necessarily know. Again, I don't know exactly what the Team Star battles are going to be like. Maybe they'll be totally fine. Maybe they won't be horde mode at all. Uh, in any case, I'm not even necessarily that opposed to like a Pokemon horde mode style game. I think there actually is like genuinely a lot of potential in that concept. Um, no, we don't need to heal up again. That being said, I don't really know how you would necessarily do that. I guess it would have to be a thing where it's timed where like the battles are like turn based battles, but you have to defeat them in a like strict amount of time otherwise the Pokemon that are currently encroaching upon you will like kind of take over the screen that could actually like I'm not gonna lie that actually would potentially be fun if they could execute on it well I thought that the um the kind of Dynamax adventures that they introduced in uh the uh, Crown Tundra DLC uh for uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield was like genuinely a lot of fun. Not not a that was of course not a horde mode like experience. That was more of like a raid battle like experience. But I thought they did a good job with that. Um, and so I kind of trust in the Pokemon company to pull off kind of unconventional style Pokemon content. Now here's what I want to determine. Basically, everyone in my party right now except for Tortellini will be effective in this gym. What I want to figure out those. Who do I want to level up first? Oh, look at that. Mochi is actually pretty, pretty close to leveling up, so I'll do it. Uh, not a problem, Steve. I hope you have a good night.
Uh, this is actually the one Pokemon that I'm not a good matchup for. I mean, I guess I could just use Headbutt, but I think it's more... It would be a more efficient use of my time if I just swapped in with somebody that had a super effective move that I could use against Slowpoke. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, Spark. There we go. It, its health power went down a little bit slow, which made me a little bit concerned that it was going to uh, potentially not get KO'd by that, but it seems like that was not the case. Ah, uh, damn it. Why did it have to be a critical hit? It was a one hit KO. All right. Let's go ahead and let's spin our prize wheel of criticality. One, two, and three. Drop five. That means that after this battle, we are going to have to drop five random items that are currently banging around in our bag. Slow bro. All right. Well, I guess I'll keep in uh, lychee for this one. Not expecting Light to get this much action in this particular battle. Thank God that was not another critical hit. And ah, damn it! I thought that was going to be a level up. I don't particularly remember what the solution is to the teleport pad puzzle in this gym. And I don't particularly mind or care. I'm just going to kind of go through this slowly so I can take on all the trainers within here. Ah, uh, really? It's not going to kill me, but like, come on. Ooh. You know what? I'll just stick in for this one. Magical Leaf does not have an increased chance of getting a critical hit, but it will always hit me. It's like one of those no-miss moves. And... What do I want to swap in for Kadabra? You know what? Let's swap in Blueberry. I feel like I've not given Blueberry enough of a chance to level up as of late, and I feel kind of bad about that. I considered, like, using Surf would actually not be a bad uh, decision either. But Bite has the possibility of potentially making Kadabra flinch, so I would rather go with that. Okay, uh, let's see here. I, I still have to drop five random items. Let's start off and let's be a little bit spicy. I would normally like to hold on to a HP up and teach it to one of my Pokemon, but uh, this is the realm that we're currently living in, in which we drop the random items that are available in our bag, so I'm going to drop that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this random potion. I'm going to drop uh, two super repels. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop myself a burn heal. And there we go. Uh, let's keep going. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Blueberry at the front of the party. No, unfortunately, it does not scare me a whole lot, sir. Sorry, just getting something ready for something that I'm going to be doing in just a minute. I gotta say, the Pokemon that these trainers are using within this gym are way weaker than I was anticipating. I thought they would be like in the high 30s, like early 40s, but they're all like kind of in the low to mid 30s. Which is not where I thought it would be at, because Sabrina will definitely have Pokemon that are primarily in her 40s, right? So. <sighs> Critical hit time. Oh, 
One, two, and three. No center. Uh, that means uh, that we cannot go to a Pokemon Center until somebody scores their next critical hit. So let's do our best. Ooh, Rain Dance. You know what? We only have so many um, Rain Dance TMs in our bag. Maybe it would be worthwhile to temporarily delete Water Pulse with Rain Dance. I don't see myself having a ton of scenarios where I need to use Rain Dance, but it could be useful to gain that like just extra little bit of power, you know? Also, a Slowpoke just came out, so I'm going to swap into Lychee for this one. Goodbye, Slowpoke. Okay, uh, I guess I can probably give Cookie this one, although it might actually be more worthwhile to train up Blueberry. I'm just curious, how much more do I have to level this guy up to get to interesting? Okay. Yeah, I'll send him in. Why not? Goodbye to Kadabra. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to swap Cookie to the front of the party. Yeah, we already battled this guy, so I'm just going to go into random teleporters, walk across the screen, and see if we can encounter anybody that will make us quiver in our seats. Oh, look at that. Interesting. A channeler. Uh, normally a trainer that tends to wield ghost-type Pokémon, but I suppose in this scenario it will be... Oh, more ghost-type Pokémon. That is a little unexpected. I mean, I'm assuming it makes sense because Ghastly and Haunter can learn... Psychic type moves. I'm gonna. What do I want to do? I'll switch into Brioche for this one. <laughs> uh, I don't love that. Here, let me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use Confuse Ray. We don't want to attack and kill it on the turn that it used Destiny Bond. That would not be good for us. Ooh, poor form. All right, goodbye, Ghastly. I hope this doesn't ignite you. You know what, for this one, I'm actually gonna swap into Blueberry. There we go. I wanted to make sure I had a Pokemon that was just a little bit faster than him on the off chance that he would try to use Destiny Bond. Here we go. Another Channeler probably has access to some Ghost State Pokemon, so I'm actually going to uh, switch to Blueberry to the front of the party. This actually might not be a bad kind of scenario in which to maybe use like nine tails for example but maybe i should actually swatch uh switch out to why do i keep saying swatch i'm really trying to slur my words and just get through them too fast and i apologize for that uh yeah i'm gonna swat uh, switch into brioche again have brioche take care of them Same thing as last time, I'm going to use Confuse Ray, just to kind of take them off guard. 
And then I'm going to use Flamethrower. Yeah. Seems like this guy is not interested in using Destiny Bond on me, so I'm going to Flamethrower it up. Again, confuse Ray for safety, and then we will flamethrower. It is weird that there are a ton of trainers in this gym that exclusively use Pokemon that are super effectively weak uh, to psychic type moves. This guy again. We still, I think, I'm pretty sure certain that we still have two more trainers that we can take on in this gym outside of Sabrina. Oh, this is one of them, and then there's the channeler that you can see down below. All right. Um, who do we want to? Yeah, I guess it will be Blueberry or Cookie. I look at these two guys, I think that Blueberry is a little bit more deserving of this battle, so let's keep him in. Ooh, Slowbro. Say hello to my bite. Ah, I was hoping that it would flinch. Now it's going to be impossible to kill. Oh, and it has Withdraw, too. Here we go. Strength will probably finish it off. Maybe. Kind of. Ah, wow. Alright, I guess Bite will do it. All right, here we go. We have one more Chandler that we need to defeat, and then it is on to Sabrina. Oh, here we go. I think this is her. We are not encountering any critical hits, and we also only have one Pokemon left to take on. I'm going to do Rain Dance just so that we can safely ensure that it's not trying to use uh, Destiny Bond on us. All right, perfect. And also to ensure that we're faster than it. And with that set up, we are going to surf, surf, surf its life away. And goodbye, Chandler Stacy. Um, here's the deal. Unfortunately, we are still under the uh, effects of no center, which mean that unfortunately uh, we uh, cannot use a Pokemon Center until we get another critical hit. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's take ourselves a little uh, snacks and collation uh, taste test break. Give me just a quick little second so I can bring in uh, my main camera view once again. I'll go ahead and I will uh, swap the video game view in over uh, my other main camera view so you can be reminded of where I currently am at in the game. Uh, and I should probably turn on some fun, funky little music for this. Should I not? Give me just a quick little second. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to turn on the snacks and classy music. There we go. 
All right. Hello, everybody. It's uh, been a bit of a long stream uh, in large part because unfortunately things are shitting the bed yet again. Uh, but nevertheless, snacks and collation endures. And tonight uh, we have something very special to taste test. Uh, on my previous stream, I talked about how I'm currently in the middle of doing a modified version of the Whole30 diet, uh, wherein you go for 30 days without eating any milk products, dairy products, uh, added sugars, real or artificial, uh, alcohol, grains, and many, many other things. It's a modified version of the diet because normally the the Whole30 diet says you can't eat any beans or legumes, but I am just ignoring that because beans and legumes are uh, the bee's knees. Uh, nevertheless, it is still something that I am adhering to, and so uh, I went out of my way to see if I could find uh, some snacks uh, for tonight's Snacks and Colacion segment, and for the next few weeks, Snacks and Colacion segments that uh, adhere to uh, this uh, particular diet regimen that I am currently following. And oh boy, did I find something. Uh, this... Um, is Petit Navire uh, Filet de Macro uh, Moutard à l'Ancien. Uh, it is um, mackerel fillets uh, that are drazzled uh, with ancient mustard. Uh, it is a French product uh, obtained from Euro Market, my uh, beloved super hyper secret uh, European market that contains all sorts of fun little goods like this. Um, what does this thing contain, you might add? Well, let's go ahead and let's find out. Uh, this contains mackerel, uh, water, mustard, alcohol vinegar, sunflower oil, old-fashioned mustard, cider vinegar, modified cornstarch, salts, spices, dehydrated salads, uh, shallots, uh, xanthan gum, and guar gum. So, you know, I, I know that some like Whole30 th truthers might be like, oh man, Whole30 Truthers doesn't really want to get what I want to communicate, by the way. I mean, like, Whole30 Diehards might be like, oh, man, this you're eating something that has modified cornstarch in it? How dare you? I don't really care that much. It does say that it may contain milk, eggs, soya, wheat, or sulfites, which are technically all restricted on the Whole30 diet, except, you know, eggs and soya in my case. Um, but because it says that it may contain them and not, yes, 100% these are ingredients in them, I figured that it was a-okay. Um, this is my first time eating fish on Snacks and Colacion. It's a little bit of a, a different beast um, than the kind of snack that I typically eat. Oh, look at that. I opened up the little metal thing about oh, whoa, 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 my, uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, shorts just got a little bit soiled by the uh, mustard uh, sauce that is seeping out of this thing. I wanted to show you guys on the camera um, <laughs> how it immediately started uh, dripping out of it, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't really get the chance to do so. Uh, give me just one second. Thankfully, I have some Kleenex boxes that are uh, just out of your sight. Give me a second. I'm actually very uh, fortunate. Normally I don't have Kleenex boxes in the basement, but I so happen to have some uh, just over to my right or your left if you're watching this on stream. Uh, hold on a second. Something is dripping out onto the desk. We are gonna need to be careful with this one. I didn't think this would literally be, oh man, and it has a pungent smell. I'm not, I'm not excited about this, but we're going to have to go through with this. We committed to this. Okay, I'm going to do my best to open this thing up. And not spill anything anywhere, but... Uh, you know what, I'm going to... I, I want to show it to the camera, but I think it will be better if I do this on the desk. Where I don't have to worry about anything spilling anywhere. Okay. Okay. Okay! Uh, here it is. This is um, mackerel covered in mustard uh, per the advertising on the box. It doesn't look particularly appealing. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Doesn't look like the most appealing thing I've ever eaten on stream. Maybe it's amazing, but it certainly does not make for a very good impression. Uh, if we analyze the bouquet of this thing, 
I mean, yeah, we're treated to a very mackerel very fishy, very mustardy aroma. Again, it's not false advertising. It certainly is delivering upon what it advertised. I'm, I'm having a little, a couple of little uh, drops of mustard here and there to kind of make sure that I, you know, make, make sure that nothing spills on the desk and remains there. But yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I picked this up exclusively because I was like, I need something that is compliant with the diet that I'm doing right now. But maybe I tried a little bit too hard. Maybe I tried a little bit too hard. Let's go ahead. Uh, how am I going to do this? I, I brought myself a fork along, but I think it might have... I wonder if I maybe I should have brought a knife too. I'm just going to start off with like just a small little piece. There we go. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure. I don't know if there's supposed to be any skin on this thing. It doesn't look like there's any skin. It looks pretty... Okay, but there are a couple of specks here and there, but I think those might be like the shallots. Th those are probably the shallots. Okay. Bottoms up. It was okay. Uh, honestly, I was, I was expecting a shit show out of this and I thought that was perfectly fine. It's not exactly the most delicious fish I've ever dug into, but I feel like a lot of people would say that about mackerel in general. So let's go ahead and let's have ourselves another little piece of this little baby. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought the, the mustard flavor would be a little bit more overwhelming, but it's actually pretty... It's almost like it's on standby. It's almost like it's like... Yeah, we, we could really be really intensive and really powerful, but we're going to hold back here, which I do appreciate. We have one more piece here. I don't want to really dig into this whole thing right now because this is a disaster waiting to happen if I accidentally drop it the wrong way. Um, but I do want to get one more big piece in so that I can kind of properly evaluate my time with this. Okay. Okay. I, um... See, I don't really know what to think about this one. I was really concerned going into this that this was going to be a calamity. What with it spilling everywhere all over my shorts, which I'm now going to have to wash. Um, and it's really not great, pretty bad scent. But that actually ended up being totally fine. I would say that my only criticism of it, really, is that it's almost a little bit too fine. It's almost a little bit dare I say it, drab. And I think that's a little bit... It's a little bit disappointing, but honestly, I think it's a totally acceptable and fine snack for what it is. I, I think I just... I don't know. I wanted it to be a little bit more... I wanted it to kind of punch me in the face a little bit, either in a good way or a bad way. It didn't overwhelm me with just scrumptious fishy flavor, nor did it sickened me to my core. It just kind of was, and I'm a little bit... I feel like it could have... I feel like it could have done a little bit of a better job of taking me off guard. As it stands, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. It's not bad. I think it's perfectly fine, but could have been better in either way. All right, let's go ahead and let's close out Snacks and Colacion, and let's get back into the game. Uh, give me just a quick little second to manually fade around my video game views. And there we go. Okay, uh, where we last left off, uh, I mentioned how, unfortunately, we still cannot use a Pokemon Center for the life of us. Uh, which means uh, that we need to keep battling some more trainers, and I would rather not take on Sabrina right here and right now. So you know what? You know what? I have myself an idea. What if... What if I went and I battled some of the trainers in Blaine's gym? I'm interested in seeing just how high level some of their Pokemon are. 
uh, who knows? Maybe they might not be that much worse than Sabrina, in which case it might actually be really worthwhile to take him on. Uh, let's go ahead and let's fly to Blaine's gym and let's see how well we can fare. I feel kind of bad for Tortellini, but Tortellini would just get absolutely destroyed by either of these gyms. So unfortunately, I can't really use it a whole lot now. I don't feel that bad because it's like it's not like I didn't get a lot of opportunities to use um, Tortellini in the prior gyms of the game. It's just these two at the end, towards the end, that it will have to unfortunately sit out of. Um, oh. I did not mean to use that super repel. I meant to use a super potion. Uh, there we go. Right, so the whole deal with this gym is it's a bunch of quizzes, and if we get them wrong, we have to battle a trainer. Right? I, I think that's how it is. Hold on. Also, who should I have at the front of the party? Uh, Lychee's the only Pokemon here that I don't really want to use in this gym, so I'll kind of keep him over there. These four, however, can all get their chance in the sun. Um, I'll put, I'll put uh, Brioche at the front for now. Let's see here. I see. So I guess I can straight up just avoid this guy if I'd like to. Now, what I'm curious about is why exactly does Blaine allow these burglars to inhabit his gym? Like, is he not aware of the fact that he's allowing criminals to just sort of strut around his premises without any restraint? Kind of weird. Not going to lie. Kind of weird. You know what, I'm going to give Brioche the opportunity to level up a little bit here. Let it do its thing. Also, I'm... I think I might have made, made a mistake. Earlier I said that the wheel landed on no center, but I'm looking at the wheel right now, and it's currently on draw a Pokemon. Did it accidentally land on draw a Pokemon, and I was so out of my mind that I didn't even realize that? Uh-oh. That's a mistake. I'll have to go back and rewatch the stream to see whether I'm correct or not. I'll leave a comment on YouTube mentioning how I made that mistake, if that is indeed the case. I've been, I've been kind of getting more in the habit of leaving those comments there. Uh, come on. Here we go. Oh, I, I thought, huh, I, I thought that was me that I'd missed, but I guess I was mistaken. Here we go. Goodbye. That's a pretty big takedown. There we go. Level 35. We've, been, we've made pretty good progress with Brioche in this stream. Pretty easy. Of course, something that we didn't even need to do. Let's see, what is this one? Uh, 
All right. Uh, lots of Pokemon at level 36. Is Blaine not supposed to have Pokemon that are like level like 49? Am I, am I mistaken about that? Ah, come on. Ooh, man, I'm actually finding myself oddly craving more of that mustard mackerel. You know what? I'm most definitely going to pack that as my lunch tomorrow because that was not bad. That was not bad at all. But I think it would be best if I held off on having more right away. That being said, I will need to refrigerate it soon because it's not probably very good to just sort of have it out in the open like that. Weirdly enough, like of all the Pokemon that uh, are really kind of worth leveling up in this gym, uh, Brioche the Ninetales is kind of having a field day, which is impressive. It's all about that dig. It's all about that dig, 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 no base. Uh, that isn't how it goes. All about that base, 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 no treble. There we go. But I should probably replace it. When, when I do that again, I should probably replace it with like the name of a Pokemon. Right, here we go. Second verse, same as the first. Come on, don't use... Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's actually the best thing I could have hoped for in that scenario. I completely missed both of its moves. Wow, this Ninetales is not playing very effectively. Oh shit, critical hit. Uh, that means that we no longer have to worry about not being able to heal at a Pokemon Center. Uh, and with that in mind, let's go ahead and let's bring in the uh, prize wheel of criticality. Uh, one, two, and three. Yet another hot sauce shot. Let's bring it on out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to level up a little bit more on the trainers in this gym, just so that I can level up my Blastoise and potentially Ninetales, and then I will go ahead and take on Sabrina. All right, here we go. There we go. Ooh. I always like to, to grind my tongue against my teeth. Oh. Whenever I get a little bit of hot sauce on it. I know some people would say it's against the rules to immediately have water after you have the hot sauce, but I mean, it's not like... It's not like milk. Milk is what you would truly want to have if you want to assuage the flames of hot sauce. Water, on the other hand, is kind of a neutral party. All right. I'm going to go ahead. I am going to level up Blueberry, and I'm going to level up Cookie. And then Sabrina, here we come. Oh man, I feel bad for this guy. I'm just going to completely decimate his whole team. Goodbye. Wow, holy shit, that was a lot of experience points. Why was that so many experience points? Charmander. That was super weird. Why was that? 
It should have been, I was expecting it to be in like the 500 range. If we can end on something a little bit more powerful to close this out, like a Rapid Ash or a Ninetales, we'll probably gain just enough experience points to be able to get ourselves over the edge. <clears throat> or maybe not. No, I guess not. Ooh, Flame Wheel. Not that powerful of an attack, but I was always very impressed by Flame Wheel's uh, attack animation when it was first used. And, and I think I think I actually enjoyed Flame Wheel's animation even more when it was used in subsequent generations. I mean, it kind of evolves three times if you include Polly Toad when you think about it, but we don't need to get technical. Now, why do you like using fire type Pokemon, my man? Oh, is, is that the idea? Is it that like, is it trying to draw a, a connection between like burglars and arsonists? Just need to get get through this ponita. There we go. Inexplicably gaining a crap ton of experience points. I don't know why that is. And then oh, oh, well, that's it. I guess I I thought I was gonna want to swap out to nine tails for whoever was next, but I guess that's not happening. All right, we are heading back to Saffron City Gym, and we are going to give Sabrina a piece of our mind. Literally. I know that, obviously, uh, oh wait, hold on a sec, I should do this after I get to Saffron City, my mistake. Uh, I know that it would actually make more sense if I uh, kept Tortellini in the box, but at least Tortellini can hit kind of hard. Maybe there might be a scenario where I need to attack, I, I can. I need to withstand like one psychic attack, or like, I don't know, whoever it is that I'm fighting against isn't very fast, and I can quickly take them out with Victory Bell. You never really know what might happen, so... All right, here we go. Now, here's the question. Who do I want to put at the front of my party for the upcoming gym battle against Sabrina? I'm thinking that maybe it would be worthwhile to have Magneton at the front, just have a nice rock solid wall waiting to wall her. Um, what I'm also wondering is, are there any items that I should give to any of my Pokemon? Uh, nothing really. You know what, though? You know what, though? In the grand tradition of the many gym battles of we have fought before, I think it would be worthwhile to give good old Blueberry a rare candy just so that we can level him up by just a little bit on the off chance that that will prove the deciding factor on whether we'll be able to prevail or not. That does put his um spe special defense at 100, actually, which is actually pretty good, so... I think that was the right move. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally at long last time for the Sabrina gym battle. Let's go. 
Also, I to, uh, don't know at all how we're going to actually get to Sabrina, so we will have to fuck around and find out, I guess. Oh, uh, I was like really, really, really hoping for a second there that that would be it, but I guess not. Come on. All right, all right. Ah, oh, damn. This is the only one? There are like four different teleportation pads in Sabrina's room, right? Or are there? All right, I guess we're just going to have to do this like teleport pad by teleport pad, right? Trial and error. There's only one, which means that there's actually only one path in. All right, so we did all the ones for the one directly above Sabrina. And we're going to do the one for the trainer that is directly right of her. OK, he's done and out. Now this is the trainer that is directly left of Sabrina. And she's out. All right. This is in the trainer to the upper left of Sabrina. There we go. We did it. All right. Everybody's all healed up and good to go. All right. Well, without further ado, let's do this. Yeah. It's kind of weird that Sabrina showed up in Pokemon Black and White 2. It's like that one actor at that film studio place. It was a little bit disappointing to me that they never really kind of expanded on that much more beyond that. Like the, you never really had a conversation with Sabrina in which she explained what she was doing there, why she suddenly became interested in acting. Mm. Kind of wish that they did, you know, a little bit more with her character. Wow, that was not only was that a powerful. Oh, shit. Fuck you. Uh, I mean, it's still like a pretty. A powerful move that also did paralyze it, so I can't really complain about that. Oh, so I forgot we have access to Thunder Wave. So maybe it might actually be worthwhile at least to stick out and paralyze Mr. W Mime. Mr. Wime. A pretty smart move on the part of Mr. Mime, because Mr. Mime naturally has pretty good special defense. You know, what? let's let's see if I can how long I can stick in here. Mr. Mime is just increasing his physical defense, so we don't have to worry about his special defense being any higher than it already is. Wow, that was I Leechy must be like nuclear bomb because these moves are doing way more damage than I anticipated. All right. After this, I'll have to switch out. Otherwise, I might be in trouble. Come on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Wow. Shout out to Leechy for taking this battle by the horns. Uh, Venomoth. You know what? I'm going to give Brioche this one. Uh, there are a ton of other Pokemon on my team that could theoretically take on Venomoth, but... I think that Brioche can actually take this guy on. Oh shit, not only can it take it on, but it's actually faster than it. I keep forgetting, it has base 100 speed. Of course it can. Wow. Shout out to Brioche. I don't think we're going to have any trouble with Blaine after this. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Alakazam, one of the strongest non-legendary Pokemon back in the day, back in the good old days of Pokemon uh, red and blue and yellow. Still pretty powerful in this gen. Uh, and I'm pretty certain that this guy has Psychic on top of all that. But will it prove enough for us? Let's find out. 
Uh, it's faster than us to begin with, which is not great. Uh, let's see here. I think it, this might be where we're going to want to switch into Mochi. Mochi does not have as great special defense, but it is, uh, it is part psychic type and it does no amnesia. I think this will be the better option. Please don't crit, please don't crit, please don't crit, please don't crit. There we go. Ah. Uh, well, I mean, Amnesia helps make up for it because Amnesia will raise our special offense by two stages, but... You don't, you don't love to see it when that happens. All right. Uh, oh, I bet Headbutt can win us this. I just need to, again, to hope that we don't get a crit. And I think we'll be able to take him down. Yes! I was, I was concerned for a second that wouldn't be enough, but I forgot that Alakazam is very frail. This loss shocks me, but a loss is a loss. I admit I didn't work hard enough to win. Your victory has earned you the Marsh Badge. Well, congratulations to everybody that played a part in this battle. I was honestly a little bit concerned that some of the members of my team weren't going to be able to kind of pull their weight quite so well enough, but I needn't have worried. Uh, let's go ahead and let's celebrate by checking out who can learn how to use Calm Mind. Only Mochi. You know what, Mochi? As congratulations for managing to prevail over Sabrina with the help of Amnesia, I'm going to give you Calm Mind. An even better move. Look at you. I might, of course, end up uh, deleting it later on if I find that it's more useful for you to know how to use flamethrower or ice beam or whatever, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get to it. Oh, no. How do I get out of here? Oh, here we go. All right. It's time for Serial Experiments Blaine. Uh, right. I will need to fly there. After I swap Firo into my party, I'm going to have to make sure uh, that I swap Tortellini back in because after Plains Gym, we are going to get the opportunity to travel to the Sevi Islands. And when that happens, uh, we are not going to be able to swap out any of the Pokemon that are in our party for the next little bit. So got to make sure that Tortellini's in there so that we can kind of make up for lost time. All right, here we go. This, this gym looks deceptively large, but it's not that big. Uh, 
No, they are not. Come on. These are compared to some of the crazy ass quizzes that I had to deal with in the Trick Room house in Pokemon Emerald. These are like child's play. These are nothing. Oh, I should not have him at the front of the party. <laughs> My bad. Ah, come on. You got to hit me with Fury Attack. You know how much I hate that move. You know how much I dislike the fact that it is a crit machine. Right, you know, we just watch. This is going to be a crit. Oh, guess not. Yay. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. We got to get some good ass quizzes in here. Pokemon quiz. Get it right. I mean, obviously, yeah. Uh, this time around, I will swap someone else to the front of the party. Who do I want to do that with? There's nobody here that's really like super close to leveling up except Tortellini, but we don't need to focus on him for the now. Uh, I'll just I'll just keep it as Blueberry. Give him the chance. Goodbye, Vulpix. Okay, these guys are level 37, so we'll probably... I don't know, I'm guessing that Blaine will probably have Pokemon in, like, their mid-40s. Which, if you can believe it, is actually Blaine's age as well. He, he doesn't eat enough sulfites. And so, unfortunately, he's aged quite considerably during his brief time on Earth. Tombstony, no siree. W would you even have access to TM28 at this point? Let's see. Mm, I don't have it right now, but I feel like I might be able to buy it or get it. If not, I mean, that's kind of an unfair question, especially if you like are like a first time player and don't know what Pokemon moves are real or fake. Wait a minute, this guy has literally the exact same Pokemon as the last guy we fought. He didn't even think to have, like, any evolved Pokemon? All right. By the way, too bad that Blaine doesn't have a Charizard. I think it would have been perfect if he had had a Charizard, Charizard on his team, but alas, that was not to happen. Uh, these things don't do anything, do they? No. Oh, here's the, the little portrait that shows you that Blaine and Mr. Fuji are related in some way. I forgot about that. Uh, let's see here. Nope, not what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually heal myself up a little bit. Uh, do we even need to do that, though? It's so minor, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to top up my HP just a little bit. All right, Blaine, let's do this. No joke, I've literally never had to use a Burn Heal thus far on this particular challenge, Blaine. Oh man, the, the Intimidate that you hit me with right up front would be pretty debilitating, Blaine, if I had any physically oriented moves I was going to use in this battle. Actually, you know what? I should have used Rain Dance at the front there just to make sure I can get enough 
two hit KOs. All right, here we go. Ponytail will give me a, another chance to do so. Ooh, I don't think that's going to be very powerful, Ponyta. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just as I said that, he had to critical hit. All right. Let's go ahead and let's bring the uh, prize wheel of criticality in. One, two, and three. Go broke. Hmm. A after a deal with this gym battle, it might actually be. I don't know if we'll be able to go broke immediately, but I'll keep that in mind. Feel a little bit bad because this guy's going to probably give us a lot of money. Uh, let's surf. <laughs> Again, I don't understand why is it that Ponita, Ponita, whatever. Why is it that it's awarding us so many experience points? Oh, here we go. Level 47. I, I was hoping that we would have an especially strong opponent that we were going to have to face off against. And Blaine did not disappoint. He did not disappoint. I don't know about that, Blaine. I think I literally might teach that to a slowpoke. Uh, sorry, a slow bro that I have in my party. Here we go. Now, you can actually refuse to go on uh, Bill's boat to go to one island here. But what I'm curious about is if I refuse to go with Bill right now, I know that obviously you can go back to those islands later on, but where I guess I have to speak to Bill in his lab. I've never refused him, so I actually don't know. I know there are some people that find this part of the game a little bit disruptive, in large part because we don't um, gain access to any of the other Pokemon that you currently have in your PC box for this next little segment. But I personally, again, I, I talked about this on my previous streams. I appreciate that uh, the game gives you with a bit of an opportunity to level up your Pokemon a little bit more uh, before Giovanni's gym. That there's like a little bit of kind of like story content separating the seventh and eighth main kind of checkpoints of the game instead of it just being one after the other. Don't mind if I do. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We got an extra page in the town map. Oh, that's interesting. If we don't have the town map at this point in the game, 
What happens if we obtain the extra page for the town map? Do, do we just not get to see anything? Interesting. Here is one island, Kindle Road, Mount Ember. That's the new location where we'll be able to encounter Moltres. And Treasure Beach, which contains a lot of items that you can uh, obtain over and over in, like uh, Pokemon like Meowth and Persian. Not a lot of Pokemon or stuff to do on uh, Two Island, but you do have the woman that will teach your uh, starter Pokemon, like the ultimate grass, fire, or water type moves, so like Hydro Blast, uh, Blaze Burn, whatever they're called. Three Island, you have a little bit more going on. Uh, you have Berry Forest, where we're going to have a little bit of story content going on there. Uh, and yeah, some stuff uh, to take care of. It's finally cool after spending so much time in the kind of mainland of Pallet Town to finally be able to kind of explore some new content in the game. I really like the Sevy Islands. It's unfortunate, you know, we recently learned that the Sevy Islands were going to have a lot more content to them. It's unfortunate that it seems like it's going to take you a while to actually get to that new content. Uh, this is unfortunate. It would seem as if... Um, we actually don't have the opportunity right here and right now to sell our item, sorry, buy a bunch of items and then sell them off to get rid of all our current money. So we'll have to remember for next time. Until then, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save my game. And I'm going to say thank you once again for tuning in to another installment uh, of my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Nuzlocke run. If you enjoyed what you just watched, uh, remember, as always, you can catch my streams live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST here on twitch.tv slash live, uh, And you can catch them after the fact on YouTube, where they publish every Wednesday and Saturday at 3.30 p.m. EST. Uh, and of course, don't forget, as always, you can also catch me over on Twitter uh, if the tweets and the twits are more your speed. I am at Alex Kazina, A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A. Till next time, I'm Cozy Bear, and I want to wish you a good night.